How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. Well, Cersei on this show, you know what that means? We have got this AEW Blood and Guts show to talk about here today. What'd you think of that match? Holy smokes, it was wild. We'll tell you all about it here today. But obviously the top story, which we actually don't have an update on today, at least at this moment, is the situation with Santana. Santana was injured during the match. He hit the ring, did like three spots, hit a urinage, and uh, his, his, like, his lower leg went one way, his upper leg went another way, his foot went another way, and, uh, and he collapsed. And he rolled to the apron, and he laid there for the entire rest of the match. At one point, I think he got to his feet, and he did like a quick, he hit somebody or something like that. But then he was down, and he laid there, and he did not move. And it was a knee injury of some sort. And the word that I had heard last night was, the doctor, you, you get an initial examination, and then you've got to go get the MRI. And uh, based on the initial examination, it was believed that he might have torn multiple ligaments, ACLs, MCLs, whatever's in there. And so he was scheduled to undergo an MRI, and uh, we could all hope for good news, but he's probably going to be out a lengthy period of time. So all the best to Santana. If we get an update, we will let you know, but uh, presumably when he... Gets everything figured out, he'll give everybody an update. So that is uh, the big injury uh, coming out of blood and guts. And, you know, we talk about all these injuries and all of the crazy things. And, you know, some people talk about toning down and too much craziness. And he did a urinage. That was it. He did a urinage and he destroyed his knee. And it didn't even look like he did it wrong. So things happen in wrestling. And, uh, and that's it. Back in a moment to talk more. Observer Live. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simber, VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Yes, I am back. Thank God, right, Mike? What happened yesterday? I have no idea. There was an issue with the connection between your setup of the tie line and the byline's tie line, and I fed into your byline, and that was fine, and... The show sounded fine if you were watching on video, but if you were also watching on video, you saw me with a phone in my hand because the radio portion of the show, there was a connection issue. I have no idea, but it was alleviated by the first uh, first, first main uh, segment. So everything worked out. Why, is, why am I so high and my head so big compared to yours? What's up with my camera? I Who have... was messing with my camera when I was gone? <laughs> Did I grow? You have ghosts in that house, apparently. They caused all sorts of havoc yesterday while you were on the road. And Mike spittled while he was on the phone. I don't even want to know what that means. Spittled? What does that mean? I don't know. Uh, we'll figure all this out later. Am I... Are you adjusting your pants? What are you doing right there? Up, up, down, up, dope. Am I always up this high, or what's going on? It's good I thing all of you listening on the radio are like, what is this idiot talking about? What I'm talking about is Logan Paul. <laughs> YouTube and celebrity boxing superstar Logan Paul is officially under contract with the WWE. Paul announced the news on Twitter and Instagram today, writing that, quote, he just signed with the WWE. You know, I was thinking, by the way, this is a totally, just a totally different thing right here. But uh, Dave, you know, went on for like 25 minutes about social media last night and how much it sucked. And uh, it does suck. But, you know, what's funny is I was thinking about this today, how, how different uh, all of these different social media platforms are. So I use Twitter every day, largely for business reasons. I tweet out, you know, when the show's going to be on and this and that. And every now and then I'll, I'll quip. So uh, then I was thinking about, I never, I used to go on Facebook, and uh, I have an Instagram, but I, I almost never, ever go on either of those platforms. And I was thinking about it today. You ever notice that, like, your Facebook is just one giant unending wall of everyone telling you every horrible thing that has ever happened in their lives and what horrible thing is happening today? But if you go on Instagram... 
It's like every wonderful thing that's happening to everybody in their lives and how great they look and how cool their stuff is. It's like, it's kind of bizarre when you think about it. It's like, can we have like a middle ground social media, which isn't like every horrible thing that happened to you, but also not, you know, complete BS about your imaginary life? I don't know how I got off on that, but oh, I guess it's because because yeah. Logan Paul's a social media star. Sick of looking at Brazilian butt lifts fill up your uh, IG timeline. So uh, he signed a multi-year deal to compete at multiple events per year. Uh, we uh, this is not official, but the the uh, I was told it was a three-year deal. So he's going to be around for a while, and he's going to be doing a lot. And uh, if you watched, if you watched WrestleMania, I mean, he's shockingly good at this whole pro wrestling thing. And uh, we'll see what happens. I mean, he, they, they did the match at Mania. Him and the Miz had a breakup afterwards, which I couldn't believe they had a breakup because, you know, as we talked about, the entire point of that WrestleMania program, I mean, I don't know if it was written into his contract or what. But it was like, we're going to get you over as a baby face when this whole thing is done. And uh, people do not want to cheer Logan Paul. And they they did the angle, and they had Miz turn on him, and he still got booed. And uh, and then, of course, on, on Raw Monday, Miz talked about how he was going to be teaming up with Logan Paul, and they were going to win the tag team titles together. And they even asked, like in storyline, they asked him, didn't you turn on this guy? And so he had to come up with this cockamamie excuse about how he's trying to teach this guy a lesson. So uh, I presume they're just going to put some water under the bridge and they'll they'll be a heel tag team together. But maybe not. I mean, maybe he's going to be a baby face. All I know is, you know, he's better than, you know, I don't want to throw poor Zion Quinn under the bus. Oh. But he's multitudes, <laughs> multitudes above Zion Quinn, for example, and many in NXT. So... How there do you, you think go. he looks in a suit, though? Well, you know, he's tall. He's a handsome man. I'm sure he looks fine in a suit. <laughs> well, this is also, too, the you know unabashedly new era of WWE where you don't even have to think about, well, there will be what celebrity is going to be there. I guess that's the question, because as far as a celebrity appearing at these 10-pole events... Man, they're going to go with it. There's only so many names you can call back on from the past anymore. But you can grab somebody who's in pop culture and is friendly with you. And we see it with Baron Corbin and Pat McAfee. You got a lot of people on that roster who are not Pat McAfee, but what can get the most attention for them? A one-on-one -on -one match between Baron Corbin and Pat McAfee? Sure. You know, that's going to dominate his show the next day, which gets a huge amount of listeners. You take care of that aspect of things. You have The Miz and Logan Paul out there doing whatever they're going to do. That gets covered on E. You heard Miz brag about being on the Today Show or Good Morning America or whatever he was going to be on last week. So this is kind of what you're going to get, you know, <laughs> is anybody that they are friendly with have more of those people end up on the show. Any Tyson Fury appearance you can get, anything like that. I'm sure we're going to see a lot more of this in the next, in the near future. That's for sure. Man, I forgot to hit the record button at the beginning <laughs> of that segment right there. So everybody listening to audio, you'll never get to hear my my social media rant that I went Why on. Why not? You can get it from they're, uh, Dom they're probably or Daniel. All, they're probably all thankful. Is, is Byline not recording this either? That's how bad things have been. They just decided to burn everything either and not record it? They got to re-air this show at, at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 5 Pacific anyway. We can get it from them. I am still in vacation mode. That That's part of the problem right here. <laughs> And then, and then somebody was like, you're following my non-wrestling fan girlfriend on Instagram. Don't even get me started on this Instagram thing. Oh, I've, yeah. I've actively followed about 50 people in my life on Instagram, yet somehow I, have, I, I follow like 4,000 people. Yet somehow, somehow no, he's following... Bro, I don't even... Like, God bless... Are you following Nikita Lyons? I don't want to say this because, uh, you know, I might insult people, but... About thirty nine fifty of you, I have no idea who you are, and I don't know why I'm following. And you're, those are just the people that work for the website. But uh, you know, if you're one of those people I'm following, I do know you. <laughs> what about their girlfriend? Of course, 
<laughs> I know everyone I'm following if you're listening. But the other thirty nine fifty, you... I, I have no idea who you are. <laughs> you, we like you the most. You, all you know right. Who you are. By the way, uh, you better when I was gone yesterday have reviewed NXT. You know how pissed off I am. I don't know language. What what goon squad puts together the shorts to be put up on the the YouTube site? But like, I know I would drive them nuts by doing a segment and spreading it out over like you know the twelve and the fourteen minute segment. Don't do that. Try to get all of the review in one segment. That way, it's easier to be uploaded on YouTube. And you know I suffered through that show and saved the whole last long segment for NXT. And they didn't make that one of the specials to put up on youtube i felt insulted and hurt why don't you just watch the show i did i watched the whole damn show and did a whole 14 minute review in the last segment of yesterday's show i thankfully see. didn't have to be I done see. by phone i see well uh did you mention that uh two dimes why has been you murdered? listen to this show did when you I'm mention it? did you mention two dimes has been murdered yeah well He's, he, he was no wait a second he no, was no, no, not no, murdered no. He, he thinks he thinks he sleeps with the fish listen he can swim i don't know if you know anything about anything but he didn't a little just, bit of something about didn't, something. He didn't just dive off the bridge, dude. He probably had concrete blocks on his feet. He was thrown off that bridge, and he's dead. You don't know they, that. They killed two dimes. That's, That's the storyline. It's a big assumption to make, and he I don't like what you're insinuating about murdered. an Italian. I don't. He was... M what I'm insinuating? About Did you Italian. watch the show? I think you may be racist. This bloke's been murdered, Okay. We don't Which, know man, if I were him, let me tell you the two people, if I were them, I'd be uh, two dimes because he's been murdered. And uh, also uh, Zion Quinn, because a Apollo Crews, the uh, f the future seer, he could see the future. He looked at the guy and goes, I don't think things are good for you. And I had just seen his match with Sangha and I agreed. Back in a moment with Blood and Guts, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sabervivi, also WrestlingObserver.com. Let's do AEW, and we'll come back for some more news later. So this was the Blood and Guts show. They opened up with Orange Cassidy and Ethan Page, which I thought was a great match. Was it an all-timer? This was not an all-timer, but it was great. It was a great match. And uh, we had interference at the end with Dan Lambert, and... Uh, he got the orange juice, which, by the way, I'm very bitter about because something very similar happened to me when I wrestled orange. Orange spat the juice in Lambert's face, hit two orange punches on Ethan Page, and then after trying the entire match, he finally body slammed him and pinned him. There were, I think, 12, 13,000 people in the building, and it sounded like it, and they were hot. And uh, because there were two rings, uh, they had to kind of zoom the camera out to show both rings every now and then, which actually made you see how many people were in the building for once. They need to have two rings every week so you can see the size of the crowd. Because <laughs> usually, you know what it reminds me of? Dave's always talking about how he's making the comparison about impact would have 500 people look like 2,000 and et cetera, et cetera. Have you ever watched a UFC event? The UFC will have that flying camera, Okay. And every now and then, usually during the main event as, uh, you know, Buffer is, is doing the ring intros, this flying camera will go back and it'll show like this giant panning shot of the entire building. You're like, holy smokes, there's a lot of people there. But aside from that, when you're actually watching the fights, it may as well be in the UFC gym. I mean, they darken the building. They zoom in really tight on the cage. You could see like a row of ringside and maybe a couple people behind. And that's it. And that's like 95% of the show looks like that. Except every now and then when they decide to zoom back and show you this entire sold out crazy crowd. When there's a knockout, they'll show the big crowd of everybody going crazy. But uh, they kind of shoot 90% of the show the same way. You can't see how many people are there. So anyway, they need to get... Uh, more shots like UFC does, maybe after a match or just that big, crazy, wild. But anyway, there were a lot of people there, and they were loud. They need to utilize the jib better is what you're saying. They sure. Gotta swing yeah. that crane around and get it going. Whatever it's called. We had a Christian promo, <laughs> and this dude comes out, and he is just he's being booed out of the building. Like, they're not even letting this guy talk. 
And when he finally talks, he explains that I was told to come out here and apologize for my comments last week, particularly the comments I made about Jungle Boy's father. And he says, Jungle Boy, I'm sorry that your entire family isn't dead. And man, this crowd just... <laughs> Like, I'll talk more about this. It's the same feeling I had about this last week. So I'll, I'll, I, when I have more time tonight with Vinny, I'll talk about it more. But uh, then, he, then he adds, actually, you know what? I don't want Jungle Boy's mother to be dead. I want her to call me. <laughs> and uh, he's just, he's getting so much heat. And then he says, you know, I, I was advertised for a match, but it wasn't a match with me. It's a match with this person. And, and Luchasaurus has got a brand new entrance he is now evil Luchasaurus. He's the Douchasaurus. And he comes out <laughs> for a match with Serpentico. Can I say that, Dom? If not, I apologize. <laughs> I won't do it again. But anyway, he comes out for a match with Serpentico. He kills his poor bloke. And then he takes him outside and he choke slams him on the floor and kills him again. And uh, he is an evil, evil dinosaur. Which is a great tie-in, by the way, for this Jurassic Park. Because those dinosaurs, I don't think they were baby faces guess it depends on who they ate right and we had scorpio sky and wardlow this was a weird segment because uh they actually set up like wardlow goes i'll go through everyone you want to to get to you and then scorpio goes all right well let's wrestle next week for the title i was like that was easy so we have a street fight next week for the title ftr and danhausen beat the gun club and max caster when uh anthony bones jumped out of the wheelchair because he's no longer injured. He tried to use the crutch. He accidentally hit one of the uh, behind boys, and uh, they got pinned by Danhausen. I'm not sure if I can... I'm being very careful about my language on this the show. The gluteus boys? Because of what happened earlier this week. So anyway, uh, then there's a pinfall, and then the storyline afterwards is is Billy Gunn, like all the the uh, the boys, and, and uh, Danhausen... And uh, FTR, they're all having this big argument. Max Caster, Anthony Bones, and Billy shoves down his son because he sees Caster and Bones. They're they're more like a son to him. You know, I was looking for sons, by the way, as Christian. There's a lot of ways they could go with all of this, but I expect <laughs> it's probably going to end up being a swerve, and uh, all the guns will turn on uh, Caster and. And they'll end up going babyface, the acclaimed. We had uh, Jay Lethal and Sanjay. I think the uh, the main event of Death Before Dishonor, one of the main events is going to be Jay Lethal versus Samoa Joe for the TV title, which should be good. I would hope so. Yeah. Jade Cargill beat Layla Gray. This was a very complicated segment. But at the end of the day, what happened is Jade beat her. And then uh, she claimed that uh, they had issued an open challenge and nobody except Layla Gray accepted. And uh, which makes the baby faces all look like geeks. But then it turns out that Layla Gray is actually in on all of this and she helps beat up the baby faces. So essentially what happened was Stokely was lying. They, they issued the open challenge. Layla just happened to immediately accept icing out the other baby faces. And then she turned on the baby faces when they ran out because uh, Stokely is trying to recruit her, I guess, as a baddie. Although I don't know if she signed, and they kind of shunned her afterwards, so this may have just been a you know, one-time angle leading to something more. Then we add the uh, main event, Blood and Guts, Moxley, Claudio, Wheeler, Eddie, Santana, Ortiz versus Jericho, Sammy, Hager, Garcia, Matt Menard, and Angelo Parker. And what a match. Holy smokes. Everything you would expect from a match like this. They did it war game style, six guys. Uh, on each team, once all twelve were in the ring, the uh, what is not called a match beyond began, and uh, it's funny you should be able to call it anyway. So they did all the stuff. They had glass. They had. Do thumb people tags, even realize chairs, though, that it was two separate matches? Tables. Does anybody realize that? Not really. And then uh, Moxley. Remember how we talked about? I think Moxley just travels around with a bag of blades. Well, this bloke is just cutting dudes left and right. I think he cut everybody who bled in this match. I could be wrong, but, I mean, he was just running rampant in there. That's... And everybody's bleeding. And uh, finally, first, uh, uh, Ty beats up the ref. She opens the door. 
Jericho starts climbing to the top of the cage. We have Jericho on top. We have Sammy on top of the cage. We have uh, Kingston on top of the cage. And eventually, Claudio ends up on top of the cage. Sammy gets thrown off the cage through a table, so he's dead. Then it's, uh, uh, so we got uh, Matt Menard also climbed up. So the big, the whole shebang at the end is uh, Eddie Kingston gets Jericho in the stretch plum. And uh, he's trying to submit him, just desperately trying to end this match and win and submit Chris Jericho. But at the exact same time, uh, Claudio has got Matt in the sharpshooter, and Matt submits first. So even though Eddie is one, it's like mute Mike slurping, even though Eddie is one, he's furious that he had the chance to actually win the match and submit Jericho. But Claudio submitted Matt first. And so Eddie already hates Claudio. Now he really hates this guy. Claudio's like, bro, we won. We won the match. And he goes for the fist bump. And you could see that, like, Eddie's really disappointed. He's kind of still, you know, happy that they won. He didn't want to lose. But he's still upset. So they're doing a a build here towards uh, Eddie versus Claudio. That will explode at some point. And uh, I thought the match was, uh, for what it was, you know, I don't know if you're a fan of Blood and Guts or not, listener, dear listener, but uh, for what it was, it was a great, great Blood and Guts match. And uh, everything that you expect, they gave you, and a good finish at the end, which plays into multiple storylines. So I thought it was, uh, I thought it was an outstanding show, quite frankly. Yeah, still a satisfying victory with the good guys winning, but this Eddie Kingston, Claudio... Thing that stretches back years and years that's going to play itself out more so we have something coming from this which is good let's take it back to the beginning of the show though sometimes the simplest things how old school for as many old school guys as hate orange cassidy maybe even some of them they don't like ethan page <laughs> that match working towards a body slam, which ended up being the finish, was awesome. And that shouldn't be forgotten about on a night that obviously is going to be dominated by people remembering blood and guts. Same thing with Christian. I know some people thought it was too low of a blow last week when he mentioned that Jungle Boy's father was dead, but it felt to me... Context is everything. WWE tends to look, and I can understand it's touchy for anybody, but it seemed to be last week Christian was building to that. And the way he was building that crowd and the way the crowd was going with him, like to me, that that line was coming. And I think in the context of what it was, it got the ooh, it got people really after Christian. And once again this week, he shows how good he is. Remember when he had the dollar bet with Chris Jericho about the date with Trish and then they have the match at Mania and Christian turns on Jericho and the swerve goes completely opposite of the way people thought it was going to go and he has the kiss with Trish and it's just nasty and it just he was at the height of his great sliminess. That's what this feels like. He is so good and I don't know what you can do with Luchasaurus. But at least they got a little bit of a different spin on them, so we'll see what happens. Back in a moment with more Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Albert is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Semper, VB, also WrestlingObserver.com. If you want to uh, text us, what are your thoughts on blood and guts, everything else? 425-780-7566. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com, at Brian Alvarez on uh, Twitter. And uh, some other quick news notes here. NXT ratings, 575, down 10% from last week. 0.11 in 1849, 42nd on cable. So whatever bump they got, they got a big bump last week, actually, as a result of, uh, I presume, everything going on with Vince. They got plugged on every single new show you can think of. They had a great SmackDown number, a great NXT number, a great Raw number. This week we had another great Raw number because of John Cena. But then NXT, back to uh, .11. So we'll see how SmackDown does on Friday. 
I don't know if they have anything for SmackDown. What do they have on SmackDown Friday? I think the only thing they've announced is everybody that's going to be in the Money in the Bank Oh, yeah. The Summit. going to appear, yes. There's a Women's Money in the Bank <laughs> Summit. Whatever the heck that means. We've also got uh, New Japan bout official for Ric Flair's last match. Clark Connors, our main man Clark, will be facing Ren Narita July 31st. So the lineup thus far... For the show called Ric Flair's Last Match, has Clark Connors, Ren Narita, Killer Cross versus Davy Boy Smith Jr. That'll be a clubber in one. Uh, Davy Richards and Eddie Edwards versus the Motor City Machine Guns, which should be awesome. Jordan Grace versus Deanna Parazzo and Rachel Ellering in a three-way for the Impact Knockouts Championship. I believe the title's on the line. Titles may not be on the line for these matches, but these matches are happening. Josh Alexander against uh, Jacob Fatu. And actually, yes, those are both title matches. And then the main event will be the main event of Ric Flair's last match, everybody. Will be Ric Flair's last match. (laughs) What is it? I don't know. (laughs) They haven't announced it yet. We just know it will be Ric Flair's last match. They haven't announced it. We don't know what it is. I just, I want you to now try to take off your shirt and say, the shirt is too tight. And then just, uh. Well, after vacation, it is too tight. It's. Uh, Lex. Uh, what the heck's the match? I, great we, motor. Didn't they half announce it like months ago? It was going to be like, uh. No, well, Rick Flair Rick, and FTR versus the Rock and Rolls and somebody else. Ricky Steamboat. Ricky Steamboat. And now. Said, nah. <laughs> I mean, you can't just announce it'll be Ric Flair and FTR versus the Rock and Rolls and a mystery partner. Maybe they don't Now know. it's like totally off the table. It's just like, he's going to have a wrestling match. His last one. <laughs> Buy your tickets now, everybody. Well, that's the thing. Yeah, now that, uh, I mean, is it going to be a one-on-one now with somebody? Or are they trying to figure that out? Is it... Well, are clearly the they're roll- trying to figure something out because they haven't announced the match yet. Well, my question is because if you look at those matches on paper, you, you take any of those matches and you go, that well, that's pretty good. And if you add the Rock and Roll Express against FTR for the second time around, who, not being involved in the Flair match, I mean, it's another nice addition to that card. So I wonder if they're still going to be on it or not. This person says maybe we'll finally see Ric Flair versus a broom. No? <laughs> I, I I don't know. I was close if you ever watch one of those Rufus Jones matches. Alan Angel's done with AW. Well, his contract expired. He's on a uh, – he, he's they've got a per-show deal, so if they want to use him and he wants to do it, he can – Yeah, uh, I reported that you reported that because that's what was reported on the front page of the site. Yeah, because I reported that. So that's how it works, people. If Brian actually says it and says he's reporting it, then you can actually report it. As Brian, Brian Alvarez is reporting it. 24 years old, he says, is of June 30th, my contract is expired. I'm nothing but grateful for the two years I spent there. I love AEW. Was, is the best place ever to work. Got to wrestle some of the best wrestlers in the world on a weekly basis, as well as travel to some of the most amazing cities, meet some of the best fans in the world. No hard feelings between myself and AEW or Tony Khan. Had a great time in AEW, would have loved to have stayed, but I'm extremely excited for my future in pro wrestling. And he says he's going to work as many towns as he can, meet as many fans as he can, wrestle as much as he can. So a lot of people have asked, like, well, couldn't you do that before? Well, yeah, he could have. But I think, I don't know exactly how it works, but my presumption is that if you're under contract, let's say that uh, Defy wants to use Alan Angels, okay? And he was, and he was signed to AEW. My presumption is that it would cost X amount of money to get him through AEW. But if he's no longer with AEW, then they can negotiate directly with Alan Angels. And if the guy wants to come in and work for 25 bucks because he wants experience, he can do that. A booker's fee? So I don't know if it's, I don't know if you'd call it a booker's fee. But I don't know how it works. But my presumption well, is certainly my presumption answer. is he the the amount of money you would need to book Alan Angels when he was under AEW contract was likely more than Alan Angels is going to charge now that he's not under AEW contract and working a per show deal which means he probably will get far more bookings 
That's that's what I presume is going on here. If I'm wrong, uh, I'm welcome to be corrected. But I, I think that's why, you know, people are asking, well, why did you have to quit to do indies when you could do indies and not quit, but like, you know, why couldn't you do that when you were under contract? So well, it's also I think a peace of mind thing as well too, because obviously you know John Moxley, if he has a chance to go to GCW or wherever, he's going to take it and. But if you're an Allen Angels, you know, say you get hurt in a Beyond Ring or say you get hurt in a Defy Ring or whatever it is, you know, then you you screw up any chance or possibility you may have on AEW on national TV. I know people would say, well, he wasn't on national TV. Well, you never know when you're going to get the call. You know, this is a guy who's 24 years old who ended up making it onto national TV at a very early time in his career. So you never know how these things are actually ultimately going to work. So I'm not sure if, you know, what the limitations were for, for him, but I think that probably plays somewhat into people's minds that you don't want to go out there. Remember Mance Warner? I mean, he did all that fighting to get out of his MLW contract. There was all that big rigmarole. And then, you know, immediately after that or not long after that, he breaks his leg. <laughs> and it's like, well, if he was going to sign with AEW or go somewhere, now he's lost that chance for a little bit. So... You never know what what's going through somebody's mind. Well, the other thing is, Alan Angels is twenty four. Okay, I'm I'm uh, I'm forty seven right now. If I if I were offered a deal to make a hundred thousand dollars a year, fifty thousand dollars a year, and never wrestle, hey, let's do it. But if you're twenty four, it's like, bro, I'll take the same money or even a little bit less. Just get me out there twice a weekend so that I can really get better at this whole wrestling thing. So that I can, you know, make more money at some point in my career uh, with some company. So I presume that's that's similar to uh, what's going on here. Can I report that? No, of course not. I will not. I will not. I will not sign anywhere for fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> kidding me? It's my net worth now. For my you. net worth is ten, twelve million. You know what I am? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a deca millionaire. That's what they call a him, right? Deca millionaire. A deca millionaire. <laughs> so no, I'm not going to quit everything just to wrestle for not wrestle for fifty thousand a year. Now Christian, on the other hand, that guy's all up in this idea of working no dates. Well, he's working dates, but he's not wrestling. See, and making and you a lot of money. All over that that catchphrase that he had: "Outwork everybody." What does that mean? See, he outworked everybody. I like it. All right, let's uh, let's see what we got here. I don't know if this is intentional or not, it says here. But Eddie winning against Jericho, only for things to spiral worse and worse and to end in a blood and guts match where he doesn't get the win personally, but as a team, courtesy of a long-hated rival, is great storytelling. Yeah, you know, they have a lot of great storytelling. But people like to imagine that they don't have good storyline and that WWE has the best storytelling. Um, which is preposterous. Really? They they both sometimes have pretty crappy stuff. WWE but I, far more often, but... Let me say something, though, okay? Because I don't want people to get mad about me not saying that WWE has the greatest storytelling. WWE's storytelling largely, absolutely, completely, totally sucks. And I don't want to hear an argument, okay? And the reason for that is because Vince changes... You want to make a list of all of the things that have started and stopped and gone absolutely nowhere. And, I mean, dude, thousands, thousands of them in probably a two-year period. But you know what they are very, very good at? What's that? After four weeks of whatever happens, happens. The people that put the video packages together, their job is to create a coherent story out of this nonsense. Those people do a fantastic job. And that's why when they did that poll about which, you know, which company has better storytelling, you know, when I when I saw that poll, I was like, well, this is going to be a landslide. But then it turned out it was not a landslide at all. There were a large number of people who claimed and granted this is a claim. They claimed they watched WWE and AEW and they believed that WWE had better storytelling. And I was just like, how could you claim that? Like, there's no consistency to anything they do ever with very, very rare exceptions. And I think the answer was because these people who, i tell telling you right now, whoever they are, they're underpaid. They do such a great job taking four weeks of nonsense and putting it together into that video package that you have to sit through on every pay-per-view telling you what the storyline is. That's why. Because, you know, Dave noted, what was the recap of Forbidden Door on AEW last night? 
There wasn't one. There was no recap of anything that happened on Forbidden Door. They just moved on to the next show. And if you don't pay close attention, you'll miss things. Dude, I miss things on every show because I get feedback from people saying, dude, you missed this. You missed that. You didn't even notice this. You didn't even notice that. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on. And if you pay very, very close attention, there is very, very deep, intricate storytelling in AEW. But if you don't pay attention, you don't notice it, and you just watch these WWE video packs, you go, man, they're way better. But, Brian, that's, I mean, it depends on what eyes you're watching your wrestling with and what you want to take out of it. For those people that look at wrestling like they look at their music as an escape when a Top 40 song comes on or a sitcom that does not have a linear storyline through it and just kind of bounces around and that doesn't bother people, you know, as long as I know this person and this makes me entertained. Like, that's, they've been doing this now for in Vince Jr.'s world for 40 years of training their audience. So a lot of people don't care about this long, intricate psychological storyline with callbacks to this and and to this match and that match. And you got to remember what happened in this match. And that's what makes this extra special. They're not watching for that. If they're watching for a far more simplistic reason, or that's just not what they, they want out of their sports entertainment. So, you know, I, I think there's a happier medium sometimes between AEW and WWE, but it's very difficult to get that on the national stage, and I don't think we are going to get one for a long, long time. You know, Ring of Honor included in that. I mean, we'll see, but it's either WWE-style wrestling for the most part or what AEW gives you, and... Again, sometimes it's like when people are arguing online, it's like you're arguing apples and oranges. It's both fruit, but you're throwing these things at each other, and they're completely different. As far as it's according to an interview he did with Fightful, <clears throat> Alan Angels turned down the per-appearance deal. So I guess he's just a totally free agent. Well, is that what point. Stu Grayson did as well? I don't know. Is that what some of the debate over the money or whatever it was going to be? But, I mean, again, 24 years old, wrestling is an amazing business. Where sometimes you start off, if you got the right look, the right things break right for you, you get huge potential. Other people like Eddie Kingston takes them a long time, but persistence is key. There's a lot of places out there to work, streaming wise. Keep your name out there. I'm sure it'll be fine. I got a moment, Observer Live. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Summer VB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. This person says, only disappointment from Blood and Guts was no one was set on fire. <laughs> now, before you just go, well, what an idiot this guy is. He does say he thought Jericho throwing fireballs was leading to a payoff. Well, that could still happen down the line. I don't know how you safely do that payoff. I think the, the payoff is not someone getting lit on fire, but just the wizard gets a fireball in his face from somebody, whoever that ends up being in the end. But uh, if you, if you want to hear more... About uh, NXT 2.0, which sadly, I was unable to recap as I was traveling yesterday. If you would like to hear more, well, and of course, AEW Blood and Guts. It'll be the Brian Vitti show tonight. We spend 90 minutes recapping both shows. And uh, tonight only, the show is delayed 30 minutes. So it'll be at 9.30 Pacific, 12.30 Eastern. What's so funny? Why do you always have to laugh at everything? Because this has not been uh, uh, ironed out with Vinny yet, and you're still trying to bait no, him to do the show. It's already, it's already handled. I told Jared and I told Vinny. It's done. Did he watch NXT? Yeah. I want to know you... what he thought about the dream sequence of Wendy Chu. Oh, bro. We'll talk about all that tonight. Anil Two Dimes being killed. Allegedly. Possibly. We don't know that. And again, I think you are... Uh... Maybe, uh, dude, a year from now, this guy better come out of that that lake and pull a fish out of his trunks. You ever see Creep Show? You ever see the movie Creep Show? No. Remember when they kill Ted Dance and they movies. bury him in the water, and then at the end he comes back to haunt the guy, and he's got all the 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 ivy or whatever it is all over him, all the swamp stuff all over him. That's how he needs to come back straight out of the river with a dead fish that he's going to give to Tony D'Angelo if Italians were known to historically do such All right, we got to go, other. dude. Jiminy Christmas. Shut up. You Thank you, to Mike. You get your outro out of there. Thank, Thank you, everybody. You, we'll Thank talk you, to you everybody, next time. for listening. We'll talk to you all again. Wrestling Observer Live.